Hello there, welcome to another, another edition of Stefan Reads Live News. Off to a great start today, apparently. I am Stefan, and I, every single day, well not every single day, most of the time, some of the times, occasionally, I read uh, Line News. Line is, of course, the biggest messaging app in Japan with, his, with, with the uh, little news tab of its own now that aggregates random junk news. Uh, and I read that Line News tab, oh, occasionally. Uh, and that is uh, the whole point of this little segment thing here. Uh, so it's been a couple days. Uh, so just a reminder to like, subscribe, all of that typical YouTube nonsense. Uh, follow us on Twitter at small underscore in, in underscore Japan. All right, let's get to it. Today is Monday, September 19th. Uh, there's a typhoon blowing in, and, but there's also airplanes flying overhead like... Well, this is, so my apartment's like right in the flight path of uh, Haneda Airport in Tokyo. Uh, and uh, every day from like 3 to 7, I just get buzzed by airplanes constantly. And that's happening today. So uh, apparently the typhoon isn't affecting things too badly, in at least in some places. Uh, anyways, let's uh, get a look at today's news. The line, of course, has two rows of fluff stories. Uh, sandwiching three actual news headlines that are nothing but text that get buried because no one reads those that go to, to the gravitate towards the big pictures. Uh, but today there's also like a little thing, uh, like a little banner uh, over the top of those fluff stories, uh, tracking Typhoon 14, which is the huge typhoon that's currently affecting most of Japan in various ways. Um, right now it's in the south of the country. But it's going to kind of slowly make its way up northeast and hit most of the mainland of Japan uh, tonight and tomorrow, apparently. Uh, but we haven't gotten really get. It hasn't really been too bad here in Tokyo. I know some areas are getting really hit hard, but Tokyo has been fine. But I'm guessing this is like a whole country tab for everyone to look at if you're in Japan uh, for the, the latest updates on that. But that hasn't stopped uh, line news i'm giving me complete and total fluff to start this to start the the uh, day off let's look at story number one god i am out of practice it's taking two days off and i just suddenly can't talk anymore oh boy story number one let me tell you what we when i said fluff i meant fluff yes we have a ranking of uh yeah of uh female gainings the female entertainers in the japanese entertainment industry who are exactly 170 inches or centimeters tall exactly 100 or they say 170 centimeters just tall, as they say in japan and i'm not sure how they determine these rankings it doesn't even say in the article but this is the ranking of the top three people <laughs> that are 170 centimeters tall in the japanese entertainment industry uh so uh, let's get to this ranking i guess yes i don't understand it either uh, disclaimer, I'm not going to spend as, I'm going to not try to spend as much time on this as I did with the Norgizaka 46 singer list, which was nonsense. But, uh, person number three, according to this, is Ando Natsu. So, uh, Ando-san is from, uh, Maple Cho Gouking. Uh, they hit it big on M1 a couple years ago. Uh, although they've pretty much just been operating separately as solo comedians since that point. Uh, and she's on TV and different variety shows and everything. Um, so uh, good for her. I guess she's exactly 170 70 centimeter, yeah, centimeters tall. So uh, if you are looking for a 170 centimeter tall person, there you go. Uh, number two is Odin. Odin, uh, she's kind of kind of gotten bigger on the scene in, the, in show business over the last like year or so. She used to be, uh, oh, so she's a uh, former Gotochi idol, so like a local idol, graduated from her group, uh, Ringo Musume, in uh, 2022, so this year, and that is literally all her summary thing says. She's from Aomori Prefecture, so the northern part of Japan, and she is exactly 170 centimeters tall, so uh, that's your tall idol, I guess. Uh, and then number one is Tori Miyuki, who is an Owarai Tarento. Uh, she hit it big, uh, like, probably like 15 years ago. Um, and uh, she, like, she writes and she draws and she does all that sort of stuff. Um, you don't really see her much on TV anymore. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. I guess it's, I guess it's interesting. It's 
interesting they made their number one but this is a complete and total nonsense list so maybe not it, it's just a total random crapshoot of names i have no idea but anyways that's story number one for today it's a, oh my god i feel like this is why do they keep giving me these dumbass listicles now uh story number two uh it's uh your k-pop news yes uh i'm not sure today today we actually i think get multiple k-pop news stories by k-pop news stories i mean uh it's an instagram story yes or yes yeah, she posts so uh okay i'm gonna butcher all these names because once i said once again i am not a, a k-pop uh I mean, I enjoy listening to K-pop, don't get me wrong, but I'm not like a K-pop expert. So, uh, N, N, I'm trying to figure out how to say the Japanese, it's, they gave you like the katakana of this name and it's like, it's, oh, so it's Enumixu. Enmix's member Soryun posted a new post and oh, it's buzzing apparently. Uh, Enmix is apparently a K-pop girls group. Uh, which I have not heard of before because I am old and not hip and cool with the latest trends. Um, but apparently her new picture was quite the, uh, quite the attention grabber. And, uh, apparently she's been getting called twice as Sana plus Tsui. I guess she looks like both of them. I, guess, I have no idea why people are calling her this. And then her fans are saying stuff like, I'm guessing this is a Japanese fan saying this because uh, I don't think they bother running anything through Google Translate. Uh, it's just saying stuff like, Hontoni, Hontoni Kawaii, you're really, really cute. Okire sugimasu, you are so pretty, you're too pretty. And uh, Princess Saiko, oh, you're the perfect princess. These are some great comments here, internet people. We get. They don't know why you couldn't find anything better. Anyways, um, so the reason that this is apparently going out, someone probably paid this person to write this article because uh, today, N Mix is releasing its second single, Antwerp. So uh, look for that. Apparently, uh, okay. So that's that first row of fluff stories. Just power through the rest of these. Oh my god, this is taking forever. Story number three: Total Tempos. Uh, had Otani sent Otani Shohei's sister, uh, or they actually were um, they're they're friends with Otani Shohei's sister, and uh, they were invited to her wedding apparently, uh, and Otani Shohei was there as well. Uh, so Total Tembos is uh, or Total Tembosh, I guess would be the Dutch pronunciation. I the, but, um are a Yoshimoto Kogyo entertainment. Uh, they're a Yoshimoto Kogyo, what I call be, uh, like I formerly was, although I'm still part of Yosh Yoshimoto, the biggest entertainment conglomerate in Japan, but shh, keep that on DL. Um, anyways, they were on BS Yoshimoto. Yes, Yoshimoto has its own satellite TV station that no one watches, and they were talking about their relationship with Otani Shohei's sister, uh, so good for them. They are friends with, uh, the sister of the, one of the two or three best baseball players in the world. Uh, and hope that they're, they're, um, also really big baseball fans. They have their own Kusai Yaku team. So they, they have their own like amateur baseball team, like adult league baseball team, um, and everything. So it's, uh, you know, they're, they, they're definitely, uh, really using that, the, they're definitely if there were an O and I group to be friends with Otani Shohei's family, it would be Total Tempos is what I th what I think I'm trying to say. Uh, so uh, that's uh, story number three. Let's go to story number four, which is a second K-pop story, in which uh, it's I well, so, well the I mean I guess the main story here is that Kara uh, the. B or C list K-pop group that was A list in Japan for like a three year stretch that also unfortunately had one of its members commit suicide like last year uh, is re is getting back together, including the members that left the group before. And one of the members, Judy, posted on Instagram about this and in Japanese. And of course, because Japanese uh, entertainment fans are selfish assholes, that's all we care about. And that is the post. Is she commented in Japanese and she replied to a comment that in Japanese comment in Japanese as well. And oh boy, that is exciting here. 
so that's all the fluff for today. Let's get to the actual news stories. Uh, there's three of them. And story number one, like you would probably expect, is the typhoon blowing into the country today. Uh, so it's having a huge effect on western Japan. And uh, moving on tonight, tomorrow, it's going to be heading up north, northeast. Uh, narrowly, it looks like Tokyo's going to avoid most of the brunt of the storm. But uh, it's going to be hit, get hit on the edges. We've been getting occasional like sleet, like sheets of like downpour rain, like... Like little like five minute stretches of it just dumping rain, and then after that like just nothing. Um, but aside from that, has it, there's not really been so, like any really wind blast or anything. So we'll see what happens as the storm gets closer. Uh, story number two. Uh, so also talking about the typhoon, uh, Kagawa Prefecture, Takamatsu in Kaga, Kagawa Prefecture, uh, is a, is advising. 11 Juichiman, so that'd be 111,000 people to evacuate their homes because of high water levels um, due to the flooding from uh, the typhoon, obviously. So uh, hopefully you stay safe if you're in the area. I'm, I don't think any of our regular listeners, uh, the, the Discord crew lives in that area, but you know, just stay safe if you happen to chance upon this. Uh, okay, so the last story, story, story number three. So apparently, an old guy went to go look on his chicken coop, look at his chicken coop uh, during the typhoon, and has gone missing. And this is breaking news, according to the headline. So this happened in Hiroshima Prefecture, where an 82-year-old man uh, went out to go check on his chicken coop during the typhoon and didn't come back inside after that. They don't know where he went. Uh, hopefully this turns out better than that two-year-old that turned out to have fallen into a river and got washed, gotten washed out to the ocean and died. Um, but it's a typhoon. Don't go outside unless you have to. It's a typhoon for Pete's sake. This is, this is like oddly reminiscent of that story that we had during the last typhoon where a guy like went on to like check on his roof during the middle of a typhoon, got blown off it and died. Like, just don't. I realize uh, you got you kind of you want to check out this stuff and make sure everything's still there and you make sure everything else is safe, but you got to stay safe yourself, my dude. So hopefully they find this guy and he's alive and he learned the lesson uh, and he won't be going outside as an 82 year old into the middle of one of the strongest typhoons to hit Japan in a while. Uh, anyways, that's about it for today. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, I'll be back next time. Uh, until then, stay safe, stay strong, don't go checking on your chickens. I'll see ya. Stepping out.